it's starting to record. All right. Uh, thanks, team. Good morning, everyone. I see a lot of folks uh, uh, still coming in, or more than uh, hundreds. Uh, uh, this is a, uh, another fantastic uh, talk at uh, a hydraulic veteran community rope talk series. Um, this series has been an amazing uh, ride, if you will, for everyone, including myself. Uh, we never thought we have so many people interested and engaged and in the turn by such a wonderful group of speakers, including Tim himself today. And we want to thank everyone for participating, for being professional, uh, especially for the speakers, uh, past speakers, including including Sid Green, Andy Bunger, uh, Mark Zubek, uh, Gary Couples, uh, and many more uh, to come. Uh, this week we have uh, Tim, Carl, as well as uh, uh, Joe Morris and the Fu Wei uh, from uh, Lawrence Livermore. So today, um, I can't uh, see enough of this project. Last year, we had fantastic talk from uh, a team uh, at the New York uh, Hydraulic Veteran Workshop organized by this community. And uh, like Tim said, we pick up New York on purpose, actually, uh, as we all know why. Uh, this project called Marcellus Shio Energy and the Environmental Laboratory um, is one of the kind. Uh, you may heard some other field experiments, but I have to say this is one of the kind. Uh, we are so blessed to have team to share, actually, as a matter of fact, the latest, the latest of latest results from this uh, second phase. A $26 million uh, uh, in situ uh, field experiments that uh, uh, carried out by team and his uh, team in uh, West Virginia University uh, in Marcellus. Uh, speaking of Tim himself, Tim uh, has been a um, very distinguished career, I have to say. Um, he is the department chair right now at uh, uh, University of uh, uh, West Virginia University Geology Department, uh, as well as he actually, he has uh, 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 quite uh, experience in both industries starting uh, back in ARCO days uh, all the way to uh, academia. Um, he had his, he and his research group, a pretty big group in West Virginia University, uh, looking after this, uh, this fantastic program. And he, he had uh, actually uh, Texas flavor too. I uh, didn't realize, Tim, you graduated from Texas Tech, yeah. which is a very nice school uh, in Lubbock. And uh, then he got his uh, PhD in Wisconsin. So this, uh, 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 he, he has been, I think, m know many people in these participants that I do. <laughs> so with, uh, uh, with that, I think I'll work with Tim. But uh, before that, I want to uh, uh, acknowledge Tim again, because uh, uh, you don't need to uh, uh, do uh, uh, anything for this uh, presentation because team is going to record and uh, share the video afterwards. We didn't uh, ask any presenter to release any, but uh, those presenters, uh, including team himself, uh, are willing to uh, share this with uh, participants. And I will, as well as PDF uh, file for today's presentation. So I will release those uh, links uh, in the next uh, newsletter, uh, com uh, upcoming newsletter. Uh, stay tuned. If you didn't receive my new newsletter this weekend, that means you are not on my email list. Uh, send me an email. I will sign you up. Uh, we we not encourage uh, people forward uh, meeting invite from uh, both legal and uh, 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 copyright point of view. So uh, with that, I turn over to Tim. Tim, uh, feel free to take over. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you. 
going on. Uh, first thing is, uh, as you said, I went to school at Texas Tech, Wisconsin, and I taught at Kansas for a while, in West Virginia, and now um, every one of those schools is after me for money. It's <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is a, a, what I refer to as the MCL project, and I see the first typo because I used this for a January update, this title slide. But, uh, uh, and this is my NASCAR slide. Uh, basically, uh, I don't know if I do anything except uh, uh, try to keep everybody going in the same direction. So uh, a lot of people, uh, I put the, uh, the researchers here from uh, uh, West Virginia University and uh, BJ Carney from Northeast and uh, Rob Vignetti, who's uh, uh, I guess my uh, project manager at uh, NETL. And I can't forget that. Uh, Let's see here if I can get it to work now. Click. There we go. First thing is, this has got a lot of aspects. We work on the environment, uh, surface impacts, uh, you know, emissions, uh, the whole thing. But uh, we're just going to concentrate on one thing. But it's a long-term collaborative field project. And so it's been, we'll just do it. It uh, essentially got going in 215. Uh, there's an interesting history there. And it's right across, the first part of it was right across from the city of Morgantown. You can see it in the background. Actually, you can see my office if you got really blew up, blow up there. So it's very close. Um, and really, uh, from that MCL1, I'll refer to as the MIP, Morgantown Industrial Park. Uh, the importance of logging the lateral. We logged one of the, the laterals uh, and really emphasize the geomechanical properties and the fractures. And that's what I'll talk about, getting that data. And then we did fiber optics on the uh, 3H also, in the DAS and DTS. Uh, and we're still monitoring the DTS there at that project. Uh, MCL2, which I'll talk about mainly, is sort of trying to do that in cost-effective manner, and uh, also in a near to real time. And so we'll talk about uh, initial results and plans. I should have put it the other way around. Okay, here is MCL1, started in 215, December, uh, when production started. Uh, and two wells were essentially drilled, the 3H and the 5H. There's two older wells, the four and the six. And interesting thing about that, and I always make a point is, uh, these two wells uh, were protested pretty, at least the four and the six were protested by the city because we're a university community and it's right across the river from. And these, these wells ply all the gas for the city of Morgantown. All about 100,000 customers probably in greater Morgantown. And so when I go to the farmer's market with my wife, uh, is to you know buy local, so uh, but we recognize a lot of fractures uh, in uh, the three H about uh, a little over sixteen hundred. Uh, use some of the geomechanical logs. We really didn't use the image logs, and we should have. But we did learned a lot from the the DAS and the DTS about uneven stimulation, and there's been continued testing on that as I mentioned, and there's fracture modeling that we worked on and there's work with uh, Los Alamos going on right now. And uh, I know Hari's online. Uh, the data is available. It is public domain data. And there's numerous projects going on. I just reviewed a paper. I had no idea that they used our data and had submitted the paper to uh, uh, SPE, Reservoir Characterization. Um, but I won't talk about that since I can maintain confidentiality for it. The Bogus site is about seven and a half miles away. Uh, there's a couple, lot of advantages there, but, uh, and, but really how can we leverage the understanding we had made at MCO one to drill better wells um, with, uh, you know, more gas, minimal risk, similar lower costs. Uh, testing next generation cost-effective technologies, technologies and try something that you can maybe use on an every well basis and try to work toward, I would say, more real-time intervention. 
and improve the completion and fractures and, and, and fracturing stimulation. Uh, so, and really looking at the natural and induced uh, fracturing and the unconventional fracture modeling. Uh, I stole this from Andrew Bunger, he may be on, but without, well, without permission, but what we're really just trying to do is move that Pareto optimum a little bit. I don't think we can move it that much, but uh, uh, see if we can move that curve to, to get uh, more gas out at lower costs. Uh, one thing I want to emphasize that these wells out here, some of them are 13,000 feet. <laughs> you can't, the geology of the Marcellus changes at a much higher frequency than 13,000 feet. You can't stay, one bed doesn't even stay the same. And the number of fractures, uh, these are Terry Engelder's pictures from New York, but I've stood on that outcrop, I think everybody that's been in, up uh, in New York has. And uh, uh, so this is what you can see that, uh, and then I got another picture. Here's another picture of the Marcellus right at risk and he falls. And uh, uh, the bedding, it's not a uniform formation. And that's one thing to be looked at. So MCO1. They have about a, uh, Northeast has about a, 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 a four foot target and they stay in that four foot target most of the time. But the geology of that four foot target changes is what the bottom line is. So this is uh, showing the three and the, the five, sort of drilling up a, a, up a, a, a little bit of a anticline, uh, not much. It's pretty darn flat if you, if you looked at the depths there. But uh, you can see that that's where they landed the, the, uh, uh, the lateral. And we did a lot of micro seismic there. And this is sort of a, a, a bit of a puzzle to me. We had a vertical well for monitoring. So we pretty should have quite good depth control. And you can see that uh, the micro seismic goes in a north 59 east direction. So remember that. But also that the micro seismic is well above the target horizon, but yet these are great wells. Uh, it's up in the non-organic Montango is where most of it is. It ends at the Tully. And uh, you can see that that's the, most of the, the micro seismic up there. Uh, we logged the lateral and the first thing is lots of fractures. So here's the fractures more than 1,600 fractures. Uh, here's a blow up of it. You can see that they cluster. One other thing is you can see that the fracture is going in basically an east-west direction, north 85, east. And, and then we had 28 stages, which we divided up into, and that, that was probably a bit of a mistake, but we had uh, two, uh, uh, Geometrics, uh, we had a uh, engineered, tried some different uh, chemicals, frac chemicals, and then sort of did a, a, a variety of things in the last number of stages. But you can also see the number of fractures varies quite a bit. Here's my favorite one, stage 10, has 160 fractures. But you can see that the, they do uh, have a lot of fractures per stage. Those fractures, and this is Natalie's work, we're seeing those fractures everywhere. And they're basically self-fractured. Got lots of uh, dead oil, bitumen in them. Uh, you can see that along uh, this side of here uh, of this fracture. You can also see little bitumen through fractures going in, in a different direction here. Uh, and these are sort of like fractures. And this is not the only well, but when we start looking at them, we see these things. These are from uh, probably when the, uh, the rock matured, late Permian be my guess. Uh, and uh, you, can, you can see those. And they're all calcite filled, which is great because we can image those fractures beautifully. 
with uh, uh, both uh, uh, the electrical imager, and that's what uh, this was here, quantum geo. So there's a it's quantum geo. And then the other thing is all these fractures will fail. They're, they're quite weak. In fact, it, <laughs> if you try to test, uh, the rock just falls apart on those fractures half the time. Uh, they're just, uh, uh, just a weak cements coming in there. Um, this just shows, this is Caitlin Evans work. We can see the difference in the different formations. The Tali is a nice fracture barrier. Here, this is Poisson's ratio versus this Young's modulus. We could, the same, if you do, if you compute uh, SH min, which is basically Poisson's ratios times B, BO's constant, the plot looks pretty much the same. Uh, and you can see that it's up in, in, in a quadrant that probably is sort of a little more plastic, but also fairly strong. Uh, the Huntersville chart is in a, a, a more a little brittle and uh, uh, strong, and that, that's and if you don't have the Onondaga, which is all of southern West Virginia below you, you're going to fracture right into the uh, Onondaga and get the ocean. So that's uh, sort of an interesting to, to get this thin Onondaga here. The Marcellus sits right down here, and the Montangle comes down, which is the non-organic part of the Hamilton group. And you can look at that on a stage basis. So this is Caitlin again. Uh, the, this is stage 10. So fractures in the little green dots here. There are a lot of them. Here, this was done geometrically, 200 foot stage, put the five clusters in. And you can see that there's quite a change in the Young's modulus, quite a change even in the Poisson's ratio uh, in, in between the, the, the along the, uh, the boundary there. And there is a couple little faults right through here. And they probably, uh, soft sediment faults, probably what they are. I, I have no idea. But if you plot stage 10 on that same quadrant of Young's modulus versus Poisson's ratio, you see the distribution here and it's not very tight. There's quite a difference in both the Poisson's ratio and Young's modulus by depth. So here's this the depth plot here on this side. And you can see that going, uh, changing quite a bit. Well, that led to what uh, on the DAS was, and this is the DAS amplitude right here. And you can, you can see that, that it led to the fact that uh, uh, the cluster uh, um, five, one and two, but even five is the, the big culprit, um, was the uh, one that broke down and takes all the energy. And this wasn't uh, the clusters in between two and three, I guess three and four, excuse me, uh, really didn't get activated whatsoever. So it wasn't a very even um, cluster. And I just have an anima animation and you'll see that that it's very uneven here in terms of energy. You also see that the temperature goes way up on the stage that's got a bridge plug. So we're getting communication out through the formation, not through the bridge plug or else it would have cool. And you can see again, that it's a very uneven stimulation. Uh, we've done work with that. This is PIEM's work, uh, taking a look at the temperature and in fact, if you do it right and change your color scale on your DTS, you see that warming in the previous stage. And um, we can also see that on some of the attributes that we're taking a look at. This is instantaneous frequency. You can see it change right in here. And even in here, when you've seen that temperature again, and then this is uh, so, we can see that 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 change with the, the the DAS attributes and the DTS. If you look at one we that was engineered, this luckily, uh, you can see that it's got a much tighter distribution on Young's modulus and even Poisson's ratio. It doesn't go whipping up through here. So uh, you can engineer these a little more effectively.
And again, you'll see that the, the tongues are much more even here. And also the temperature doesn't really change at all in the previous uh, stage whatsoever. Um, just minor amounts. Okay, and that's again shown on here. You can see the cooling and uh, here's the energy a little, quite a bit more even in terms of. So that got us thinking, well, what's going on? And here's a little uh, cartoon model. The microseismic is following SH max, no question. That's where most very well in Appalachian Basin tends to do that as far as I know. And, but what happens is we have these uh, fractures that are running east-west, north 85, and we're seeing that warming in the previous stage because the well is a little oblique to it. So there is communication through the formation. So that got us thinking the importance of fractures. Um, well, this is the long-term DTS, and things you can see is the fact that the engineered stages are, uh, are cooler. Uh, uh, yeah, excuse me, here, warmer, actually. And so we got to, uh, we could see some things going on there. MCL2, uh, drilling, this started in 18, completed in July. Um, six wells on the pad. Uh, we had uh, uh, permanent fiber in the uh, uh, 5H right in the middle, that red star. And we had intervention fiber in the 1H. Uh, we, and so we could monitor uh, uh, DAS and, and micro seismic. So, uh, uh, and then two of the wells, an outside well and an inside well were geometric every 200 feet. Two wells were designed by someone else using basically the uh, uh, geomechanical properties. And so that would have been the 5H itself with the permanent fiber and the, uh, what is it, 15H. And then we ended up designing two of the wells, the 3H and the 1H. We did not have complete data on the 1H, but we did have complete data on the uh, 3H. We have a core, and I wish I had could talk a little bit more about it, but that's done in, uh, at uh, Terratech Schlumberger in Houston. That's taken a little more time to get looked at because of uh, COVID and uh, moving that core. Uh, so we, we do have the core, and we have uh, the vibrational data, the fracture ID data and a complete log suite. So that's being looked at right now. We sort of what I want to talk about is we logged the six laterals with a, uh, uh, an acoustic image log, uh, uh, neighbors slash Petromar uh, log frac view. And uh, uh, we also had the uh, vibrational data, the frac ID type data in the, uh, in the laterals too. So we use that in our design of the 3H and 1H. First thing is, I could have put any of this, this is the three. Every one of these wells got a lot of fractures. <laughs> uh, and these are the ones they picked up. So these will be the large ones. And I think you can see, here's the image logs. I mean, I can even, I can even do these, uh, but uh, uh, they're, uh, independently uh, 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 picked by uh, Dr. Lee down in Houston. And uh, uh, so this was done by him. And we have all the wells. So completion. One thing, the uh, 5H has the permanent fiber. So this is Slex's permanent fiber. Uh, and this is the DAS data for uh, stage five of that well. And what you're going to see is it's a very, very uneven uh, stimulation. There's four clusters that were picked. And you can see, quote unquote, the amount of computed sand and, and uh, uh, propent and uh, slurry that were put into there. And you can also see that that's very uneven. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll just, oops, go here. Here's a little different way of looking at it. Same thing, and let me go to here. Here's a different way of looking at it. 
we took a look at this and he, we looked at it and there's SH min and it's computed. Uh, there is the fracture intensity and you can see that cluster four and cluster one are associated with highly intense set of fractures and they take most of the energy. And so very uneven stimulation there in that stage. And then you can do the same thing with uh, this uh, as stage 10, luck of the draw. They're a lot more even as far as the uh, waterfall plots up here. Um, you can see that quite nicely. Not completely, but pretty good. And if we take a look at the uh, fractures, <laughs> I would say the fractures are just about everywhere and they tended to put them in the fractures. So uh, I guess that's good, but that, and, but SH min is a little different um, and that associates with uh, cluster four having a little bit more energy. Um, I'm just gonna show lots of work to do. We haven't really done anything, oops. We do have lots of micro seismic and working on that and the micro seismic behaves like you should think it behave in that north uh, 59, 60 degrees, uh, but there's a lot going on there. And so um, you can see this is uh, uh, for this uh, selected number of stages. We got a lot more micro seismic data to work with. Almost too much, I'll tell select so. But hey, you can never have too much. Uh, here is where uh, the design on the uh, uh, SH men, I guess. And uh, uh, we can see Here's the fracture density from, uh, frac, uh, from the vibrational data. Here's the frac from the view data, so frac view data. And you can see that they're putting it right in where we would not. We tend, the whole, the whole way we would have done it, did it is, and a way I'll show you we did, is we stay away from the fractures because we want to, and we find a, a consistent SH min. So we've been SH min. This is all little ways work and I should put her name down here. And, and then we grade it. So these are our grades on the end, our completion grades. So this just shows how we did the 3H. Staying away from the fractures as best we could. We varied the, the length of the stages, 170 to 230, I believe, but right around 200 most of the time and try to maintain uh, uh, four or five clusters and try to hit these uh, grades. And we can talk about that, but there's weights assigned to it uh, based on the vibrational data, uh, MSE, uh, things like that, uh, the uh, uh, SH min, and also probably the biggest weight is, um, is on, uh, um, on the uh, staying away from the fractures. And that comes down to the fact that what I think is once you start these things, be it on a fault or a fracture, it's just going to keep on going. And I've seen that when they cross faults, but I think this really progresses on that too. Let me get back on the page here. So trying to put together a, a learning model, and this is Louay using both the drilling data the frac view data and the frac ID data to and try to see how thin we can go to a data set to try to come up with a more automated type of uh, machine learning. So this is work that's under right now. Okay, so production. Production to start at the end of this year. So uh, we do have fiber in the 5H. Unfortunately, that fiber is non-functional below 13.5 and but we do have quite a bit and so they monitored DAS and DTS and I'll just got some of the initial results. Here's some initial results of the DAS mapping that was success, uh, started and uh, still being looked at uh, and you can see the different stages there and as the production begins. And here's, some, uh, uh, here's a frequency type map of DAS with the different stages. 
and starting to pull some things out. Lots of processing to do. I don't have any answers here for you, but you got it. What I do have is I can take that 3H and that 1H, 3H being the primary well that we uh, did, and you can look at the production. They're longer wells, so that's not a very fair comparison, but you can see it starting in mid-November, the production. If I put it on a thousand foot basis, this is fair. Uh, you can see that the three H's, which is the one we had all the data, we didn't have a uh, frac ID on the uh, one H, uh, is the best of the interior wells. You can also see that the two edge wells are the most effective wells. Um, they're not competing with each other, but uh, uh, the 3H is now producing anywhere from about 10 MCF to 20 MCF per thousand more, which not a lot of money, but when you got a 13,000 foot well, it sort of adds up. And also uh, I can see that the 1H is starting to catch up and we'll see if it does with the 17H. Um, the data, MIP data, it's available. You can get online right now. And uh, we have DAS, DTS, be prepared for a slow download on that. Uh, lots of logs, whatever. And if it's not there, let me know. Um, constantly finding. The Bogus well, we got a lot more data. Uh, we're uh, about 108 terabytes. And that was, uh, that's gonna be, a, a challenge to, to serve that data. That data will be uh, available a year after uh, uh, production began. So let's say at the end of this year. Okay, lots of work. This is all premature. We're working on the fiber optic data, both from uh, uh, the DAS, DTS, and also the micro seismic. The core analysis is uh, underway as I speak down at Terratech, and then they'll come back up here for uh, um, XRF and some other things that we'll do. Uh, uh, building a, a, a unconventional fracture model using all that data. Uh, trying to come up with some artificial neural network models that I mentioned mainly for you could target these. To use the data that you get from the LWD logs to target those. And I think we can do it by hand. It's not that hard, but it would be better if we could uh, do it uh, a little more automated. And, uh, and we're doing long-term reservoir model on the DTS and uh, we're going out to picking up that data. And then I think there's a lot to do and that gets back to uh, Andy's thing is to look at the economics of this. Is the engineer completion uh, worthwhile? And uh, um, I think it is, because I think the geology changes in 13,000 foot around these, along these outcrops significantly, both geomechanically, lithologically. Uh, and uh, we need to take that into, uh, into consideration. And then we'll start, uh, this, the whole thing with the lab is to leverage all the smarter people out there than I am, I'm just a dumb geologist, um, and let them add it. So it's the, the data will be made available. That's the, the sort of the beauty of the lab. And also then you can also replicate and test other people's conclusions. And so that's, uh, uh, and come up with the right answer. So that's where we're uh, working on. I'll just end with that. Uh, this has been a, a interesting, uh, uh, project. Uh, it'll end in March 20, not less than a year from now, March 2021. And uh, we got a lot of work to do and maybe get an extension since we've been a little bit dead in the water here for a couple months. Uh, but it's nicely funded by uh, DOE, but lots of cooperating uh, industrial, uh, um, a lot of academia uh, cooperating actually everywhere. I got uh, people looking at uh, uh, chemistry of the frac fluids, the bugs, 
the organic life that is introduced uh, in multiple universities, Ohio State, uh, Vermont, uh, Colorado, uh, Colorado State. Uh, so there's a lot going on. And so I think with that, I can uh, uh, stop right there. Thanks, team. Uh, have to see this. Uh, this is the V. Um, the whilst from last year you shared from New York and a lot of good work and the progress. And uh, I see people already asking a lot of questions that shows the interest. And uh, congratulations, T. You were one of the uh, speakers that attract most of the attendance so far. So um, with that, I think uh, uh, for the folks uh, who uh, ask some questions, I saw uh, how to join this newsletter. Uh, whoever forward you the meeting invite uh, may have my email address. Um, if not, um, my email address is uh, gang, G-A-N-G dot Han, H-A-N, at aramcoamericas.com. Uh, I always use this, okay? I'm not a guy, so it's pronounced as a gong, not a guy. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, open the floor for team. And uh, team, uh, our presentation, uh, the rope talks uh, about 45 minutes. But today's Zoom is hosted by team and West Virginia uh, University. So feel free, uh, team, to uh, stay as long as you could. And uh, but the rope talk itself is 45 minutes, uh, which means we uh, scheduled uh, probably another 10 minutes of uh, a Q and A. Uh, but I'm sure um, the questions you ask that team couldn't answer. Uh, uh, within this seminar, he will uh, might be able to follow up afterwards. I heard uh, previously Zoom has a function that uh, uh, team, before you close Zoom today, there is a function where you can output the Q&A sessions mm -hmm. so that you can read the uh, questions afterwards. But nevertheless, uh, team, feel free to address any questions you see from the chat window. Well, I see Andy gave me permission. That's good. Uh, uh, Karen asked how many perforations, uh, well, uh, and the size, and I don't know the size of the perforations and, and numbers. I don't know if it is online or not, but uh, uh, and also it varied if we had to, uh, Went, uh, with the fiber too, we changed that a little bit too. Uh, see, Mark Zoback, have you tried to calibrate the computed SHMNs with the DFIDs or the mini frac? Um, uh, we have the, uh, 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 the uh, yeah, calculating SHMN, and, and we just used the SHMN as calculated for us. Uh, and uh, um, and I'm sure it's, it is problematic, but uh, uh, and then we're trying to we calculated some other things, and that's uh, we do have the uh, those, and that's a good thing to do. That need to go back and take a look at that. Did the second experiment use 50 perfs like the first experiment? Uh, there's essentially four or five, yeah four or five clusters. So if there's, it depends how many clusters there are. And, uh, uh, and I can get the, it depends, <laughs> it depends. So, and, uh, Young's modulus shows a direct relation with Poisson's ratio, where the opposite is usually expected. A uh, direct positive relationship? I mean, there appears to be a, a relationship uh, moving up to the uh, uh, carbonate, and I guess that's 
probably expected because we do get in the Marcellus variable amounts of carbonate in the, because uh, uh, it moves up toward the uh, Tully and the uh, Onondaga. Uh, and um, I think you'd expect that to happen in, in terms of how carbonate reacts as far as Poisson's ratio, but also you got density in, in Young's modulus. So that's going to change 2.71 versus 264. It's going to change quite a bit too. I'm probably getting more questions faster than I can answer these. Ivo, aside fiber optics and some profit monitoring, did you guys consider using frac diagnostics, uh, production logging, tracers? Uh, yes. Uh, production logging we have did, an, and that's available on the MIP site. We did product, production logging, uh, I want to say about a year after the MIP 3H was uh, completed. Uh, that, uh, we probably could do it if we can find the money. Uh, we did try some uh, uh, tracers, some unique tracers, which uh, exploding profit, how's that really imploding profit, uh, which I don't think worked, but we'll, we listen, uh, Selexa listened for a long time. Yeah, I think the, the thing about the, comparing to the mini frac and the deep heads, it's similar to Mark Zoback's question. Uh, 3H was not engineered to stay away from the fractures. Uh, well, the 3H in, at Bogus, I was going back to MIP. Uh, uh, well, I think the 5H, they did stimulate some of the fractures if just accidentally, I don't know if you want to call it accidentally or randomly, uh, they put the clusters right in the fractures and then when they did that, the fractures took the uh, all the fluid. I guess if you want all your uh, and sand, if you want all your fluid and sand to go through one of your clusters, uh, uh, that could be. But uh, uh, the actually the three H is better by production than the five H. So uh, uh, so five H was sort of a, a a little bit of a mixed bag. So it's not a direct experiment. Is data open source? It will be open source. Uh, there's plenty. Uh, uh, there's plenty of log data on there from the MIP site, on terms of uh, uh, basically the, the log data, and uh, uh, and there is some core data too. So. I'll skip Jay Hewlett. Uh, you know, the answer is there. It's where the data is. It's on mcl.org. You look under data. Uh, well, yeah, it could be. Uh, I'll, yes. It'd be physics based instead of just neural network. Yes. We got lots to work to do. This is not a results thing. Uh, uh, what kind of production have you seen with respect to the low pop concentration clusters due to natural fraction? Milton's question. I don't quite know how to answer that. Um, And Karen, I can type my email in the chat box and at the end here. Maybe I can get down to the bottom. Uh, I will send, put the uh, uh, PDFs of the uh, slides out on the, on the web. I'll, I'll send that to, and to Arma. Yes, the clusters lose energy and change during the frac job, yes. <laughs> There's all kinds of variations. Uh, 
there should be the pumping completion report should be there. This is Oslin. And uh, uh, there should be the completion port report should be out there. And send me an email. I can. Uh, MCO one, Craig Edmonds. How deep was the monitoring well array? It was. It went all the way down to the. Uh, I think the array was all the way down to the Marcellus, maybe right above it. Oh, as far as the MCL two wells, yes, it's done with a micro seismic array, so no geophone array. Wish we could have done both. Need more money. Uh, have you seen that you, what you didn't expect or what you have observed that you don't have a good explanation for yet? Uh, I don't have a good explanation for most everything there. Uh, but uh, uh, I think we got ideas. And I'm going to type my email in here too. Well, I want to thank anybody. Anybody else have any other questions? I just sort of, sort of went down through the chat. Uh, is there any data measured for the pressure at the upstream of the choke? Yes, there's pressure data in the production data. Yeah, Tim, uh, uh, thanks for the email. For the folks uh, who are looking for the uh, presentation, when we release the newsletter, Tim's email will be in that e uh, newsletter too. Uh, you might uh, find uh, uh, 